gridiron rules that um, you can add that it is possible to die during character creation. Um, so basically, what those those rules, um, if you if you fail a, a survival check in a term, you just die. Those are old school high guard rules for classic traveler. Um, we're not going to do that because I find that it just basically means that you're going to rename the character and just move on. I've never seen those rules work out uh, very well. Uh. Not to mention that in a lot of cases, if you fail a survival check, that could be a reason that your character will have cybernetics or something like that. Um, just because you fail to check doesn't necessarily, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It could, it could give you some kind of bonus. <laughs> Being crippled yeah, isn't a bad. A lot in college, if you were to like, if you perceive something, then if you succeed, then it, you'll lose sanity. Right. But if, yeah, if you just don't notice, then you, going on with your life, so... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Call Cthulhu is like, yay, I saw something, now I'm insane. Oh. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the more you know about stuff, the worse off you are. <laughs> yeah, the less, the less uh, maximum sanity you have as you get every, every point of Cthulhu mythos takes a point off of your maximum sanity. Right. I really like that. That's like, well, and like even in Call of Cthulhu, there are some spells that if you cast them, you lose sanity. <laughs> like, I'm magical, yeah. I can cast a spell, but I'm gonna go crazy, so. <laughs> That's a very fatal game. Um, how does travel stack up to that as far as like champion, the chances that you're gonna die? Um, Traveler can be pretty lethal. Um, mm -hmm. The, so the biggest reason that Traveler is fairly lethal is because the um, it's it's lethal because there are no there are no hit points. So when you get shot or stabbed or whatever, the damage comes directly off your endurance trait. And when you are out of endurance, then it comes off of either your strength or dexterity, your choice of which one. So uh, when those are at zero, when one of those goes to zero, you're dead. Um, so it can be, you know, fairly lethal, considering that some of these some of these guns, you know, do two to three d six worth of damage. Now. Um, the game is, it only uses D6s, but believe it or not, it plays a lot like Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. So, <clears throat> for example, there are, you would roll 2D6, you add your, your attribute modifier, and then you add your skill rank for whatever it is that you're doing. Most cases, you're gonna to wanna to hit an average uh, which would be, you want to get eight or better. Um, so when you start taking stuff off of your strength or your um, dexterity, are those um, permanent or is there like a way to... No, you can, you can heal them back up. Um, okay. Usually with a, a character that has a medical skill or something like an autodoc or... Um, yeah, yeah, basically going to the doctor and getting stitched up. So, so for the most part, it plays very similar to D&D, &D, and it even has advantage and disadvantage in the form of Bane or Boon Dice. So the example that they give in the book is you're hanging upside down out of a spaceship that is flying uh, through the atmosphere, and you want to make a cell phone call. Well, no matter what you do, making a cell phone call is considered a uh, easy, um, an easy task. So you'd only have to get like a five plus to make that call. 
However, you are hanging upside down out of a moving spacecraft, um, so that would impose a Bane dice, which would mean that you would roll a third d6, and you would take the lower of the uh, the lowest roll. Without a, I got a shitload of d6s. I'm gonna go grab them. I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> and the opposite can be true as well. So, you could get a boon dice where you would roll three d6s and take the highest of the rolls. Oh, yeah. So this is this is like perfect timing because I can figure out how to do basically the same thing without trying to navigate a brand new system, which is very exciting. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. Yeah, I thought it was funny that they came out with an entirely new RPG for The Expanse. And the reason I thought it was funny is that The Expanse was originally a role-playing game that they were playing. And the thing about it is they were playing D20 Modern. Yeah. And so they initially they, they were playing D20 Modern. They decided they were going to try and, and sell the idea to, of a MMO that f that didn't work. And then they ended up writing, the, the author ended up writing the books. And then it became, well, it became a TV show. And then they were like, there's gaming company was like, oh, well, we're going to make a role-playing game that isn't right. D20 Modern. <laughs> it's like, right. you know? Yeah, that that can be frustrating. The but only I, uh, but now I watched that video uh, last night about traveler and create a character, and it's like it seems like it can be done both ways, where you have choices, or there's a little bit more control on what you can or can't do right externally, right? Externally, and I think it's cool that you can kind of take it in either direction. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <coughs> <clears throat> so, uh, first things first, did you guys click the link to join the Traveler game and roll 20? Uh, yes. Okay. And I see Cameron here too. Okay. My screen did not update.
Is that better? Way better. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. So, <clears throat> so the the other the other humans, <clears throat> the first batch that they transplanted became the Velani, and the Velani actually grew into this pretty powerful stellar empire. The next group that they transplanted became the Jodani, and they kind of messed with the Jodani and gave them psionic powers. So my, my one rule <clears throat> that I kind of have is that I generally only allow one alien for every three characters. Um, which would give you two humans and one one alien of your choice. In this in this case, because there's only the two of you, <clears throat> I'm just going to go ahead and say one of you can be an alien if you want. That, that's up to you. So the the very first question that you have is, do you want to be human, Verger, uh, Aslan, or um um. And now I've lost my mind. Those are the or or blap. Um, the blap are like walking salamanders. Um, and there were two other races that I I, I posted um, in the uh, from Travelers Aid Society Volume One and Two. Neither of those races are very good for player characters, though. I mean, the 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 I think they're called the Githyankio. They are literally intelligent uh, mollusks and they not to say that that couldn't be useful um, but they have the problem in that <clears throat> if they are outside of water for longer than five minutes they start to die of dehydration which that can be problematic Oh, okay. I thought it was like a Juji Ito, like snail person or something. No, they're like they're like <laughs> intelligent <laughs> octopus or squid. Oh, okay. They're like cephalopods and stuff. Okay. Cool. Yeah. You have to have you have to have like a cool like alien that has like another character of water that another character wore around their neck with you inside, like uh, the yeah. back. I think from Earthworm Jim, wasn't that like, yeah. there was like a in the middle of someone's body. Right, right. Like, you, could, you could pull it off that way, but that's probably about it. Well, and I mean, you could probably get a custom-made environmental suit for them that was filled with water all the time. There there are ways around it, but it's it sure. it would be difficult. Okay. I can go for the giant hamster ball filled with water. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the other race that, that was also from uh, Traveler's Aid Society would be possible but the that particular race is a uh, uh, basically a slave race of a of a group of aliens called the Kakri. The Kakri are like they are <laughs> they look like they're they're nicknamed the centaurs because that's what they look like. Um, the Kakri have a section of space called the 2000 worlds of the Kakri. And they are essentially um, militant ve vegetarians, and they they basically have an edict that they are going to take over the universe and destroy any meat eating race. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So I don't know that playing. I mean, there's plenty of role play opportunities to say, you know, I'm going to be this this, you know alien that was a slave race to the Kakri and somehow got away. There, there are plenty of role-playing opportunities, but you're not going to see very many of these guys. <clears throat> I have a question about the apes that got abducted. Did they, was it like one kind of ape or was it like a whole bunch of different ones? Because like, like a bonobo that's super intelligent is going to be like really different than like a gorilla, you know? Um, from what you know, I don't know. Um, I don't know that they went into that much, but the artwork that I've seen, it looks like they uplifted just regular gorillas. Okay. 
Okay, brutal. Uh, from the from the artwork and the just looking at the strength stats, strength and endurance stats on the on that one pirate, I'm definitely thinking that it was probably gorillas. Okay. <clears throat> Fire and alien race because the bonobos just hang out and like sex all day, like all the dudes. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they resolve all their problems. I've, I've read about that, like the difference between, like, bonobo and chimpanzee are so close genetically, but socially completely different. Like, one is a face eating, uh, baby yeah. killing race, and the other is like, hey, what's up? Let's party. Yeah, they just lay around in the sun all day, and like, there's very little violence, and then, yeah, chimps will just, they'll just start tearing each other apart from like the smallest of crashes. So So the first thing that we need to do. I'll be human. Sorry, I got way off track. No, no problem. So you're going to be human. Uh, What about you, Carrie? Uh, What do you recommend for the first thing? Like, what I don't think it really matters. Um, I, if it were me, um, I would stick yeah, to. Basically what yeah, I. If it were me, I would recommend not playing the other two races from the Traveler's Aid Society because they're just complicated. Um, but you know, if you stick to either human Aslan Varger or or Bwap, uh, you're probably going to be fine. They're not. They're not so alien that they would break your concentration. Okay, um, I still think I'm good with being a human too. As long as, as long as two humans do not then make things boring, I think. Sure. I'd rather. No. Just, no. Okay. Weird. Okay. So what now? <laughs> um, I'm making it weird somehow. I always do. I think. <laughs> no worries there. <laughs> So then the next question um, is, now if you want to make things fairly complicated, I mean, they're they're not terribly complicated, but then the question is, does one of you want to be psionic? What's psionic? That's cyborg? Psionics are mind powers. um, Telekinetic. Telekinetic, telepath, um, um... for a shit ton of psi points, you can even... They're basically like casting spells. Um, psionics are illegal in the Third Imperium. And all of the psionic institutes that are that are researching or training psions went underground. <clears throat> and the reason that they are illegal in the Third Imperium is because... Some of these psionic institutes tried to get it in their into the mainstream that they were going to evolve humans, and the the emperor Emperor Strafan was like, "No, you're not," and so that that kind of put the kibosh on that. However, the party was over. Yeah, the party was over. However, in the Jodani consulate, psionics are a normal everyday thing to the point that the Jodani actually have <clears throat> police and uh, technological sensors on every planet in the consulate that um, they're basically thought police. If they detect that you are having unhappy thoughts, you are taken away into and put into a reprogramming center to make sure that you are having happy thoughts. Why don't they just give you a bunch of drugs? That's okay. probably very much a part of the reprogramming. Um, so, oh, right. <laughs> so there are some Jodani that, for one reason or another, are like, "Yeah, screw this, I'm getting out of here," and they leave. Um, but to the Third Imperium, and there have been four uh, what they call frontier wars, and. If I remember correctly, pretty much every one of those involved the Jodani 
kind of dicking around with stuff that they shouldn't be and causing these wars. So the the Jodani are pretty much the one of the bigger threats to the Imperium. Uh, but there's no reason that you couldn't be a Jodani if you wanted to. Um, they're they're humans. Um, so uh, that is pretty much the first the first question is if you want to be psionic or not. Um, you could do that. But I will only allow one of you to do that. Um, and pretty much for a group of any party, I only allow, it, it, no matter what size, I only allow one player to be a scion. Are we going to be in a place where it's legal or illegal to be psionic? Um, do we get to choose? Do we get to choose? Like, it could be either. For the most part, it's going to be considered illegal where you're where you're okay. going to be at. I don't want to be psionic. Um, I don't want to hear other people's gross thoughts. So <laughs> <laughs> a lot of shit in there that's unpleasant. So that's my goal for me. Uh, what about you, Carrie? Uh, well, I don't know how I'd play it, but sure, I'll do it. Okay. So... <clears throat> With that in mind, we will get to rolling statistics. Great. So, you are going to want to roll 2d6, <clears throat> and you will want to do that uh, six times and write those numbers down, and then you can place them wherever you would like, um, and we will get to your attributes here in just a moment. Okay, so let me, let me make sure I got that right. 2d6. Yes. How, how many times? Six times. Six times, okay. Are we both doing this? Yes. And when you say... In fact, I'm going to allow you to, uh, for character creation purposes, I'm going to say, instead of rolling 2d6 six times, I'm going to give you a boon dice, roll 3d6, and take the higher of the two rolls. The highest two dice. And do that. Oh wow. Yeah, so roll three D six, drop the lowest. And do that six times. And before we, let me double check here. And these are, are we're putting these as our characteristics, these numbers? Correct. So for Carrie, if you're going to be psionic, uh, let's see here. So we'll we'll get to rolling for your side points in a moment. Because that's going to be a horse of a different color. <laughs> and what does the DM next to the characteristic hexagon mean? So that is your dice that is known as the dice modifier. It's the same thing as in uh, in D and D, so okay. a score of six to eight would be a plus zero. Okay. Um, nine to eleven is a plus one, and uh, twelve to fourteen is a plus two, and the highest score that you can get, uh, fifteen, would be a plus three. You can't have a score that's over fifteen. Okay. Uh, Below that, if you have a three to five, that's a minus one. One to two is a minus two, and a zero is a minus three. Now, if you have a zero in a step in a characteristic, then you're probably dead, or a potato. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a scion with an intelligence of zero. What kind of names do people have? Is there any? Um, there, 
there's not too much um i mean you can name your character anything you want one of the yeah. one of the Sorry. thing that i find easier to do the best way to amount to think of tr the the original traveler universe would be to think of it as the age of sail so old-timey you know names 14th or 15th century fit right in That's like what you mostly run into with other demons and stuff. Yeah, yeah. All right. But there's nothing to prevent you from just saying, ah, I'm going to name my character Bob. You know, that, <laughs> that's perfectly normal as well. So basically, if you want to have a lot of hit points, <coughs> or be able to take a lot of damage, you're gonna want a high endurance score. Okay. Um, because any damage comes off of that first. That's, you know, not to say that, you know, an average endurance score is, is going to be just as good, but it's not like you have <clears throat> it's not like D&D &D where you're going to have people that are running around with 162 hit points. It just it, it just doesn't happen in Traveler. Okay. Uh, so you said seven was for one? Yes. Oh, or no, se so six to eight would be plus zero. Oh, six to eight. Oh, man, I did not roll very well, but that's... Here, let me... I'm going to just put it in the chat. Awesome. Let's see. Thank you. Because most, I got, I rolled all seven and eight, which is pretty pathetic, but that's okay. I rolled pretty good, so I'm all right. Um. Okay. There are the modifiers. Okay. Thank you. And if you guys have the <clears throat> the uh, PDF for the core rulebook, we're like we're just on page eight. We're at the very beginning of the book. Okay. And the PDF is just one page? No. Um, the, let's see. I got see. one page. I got one page. You did. Hold on here. Uh, so, as much as I am indexed piracy, um, there is a site called The Trove. <clears throat> And I'm not really certain that it's piracy because I think that if it was piracy, you know, co a company with the legal backing, such as Wizards of the Coast, would have probably had this site completely taken down a long time ago. <clears throat> so they are considered a repository of um, role-playing games. Okay. And yeah. um, 
all of their stuff is in PDF and let me find Uh, Traveler Second Edition Long Goose. Uh, yeah. Uh, See? Yes, and oh, so wow. there are <clears throat> a number of books in there. The core rule book is the one that we are looking at. Um, and since you are not playing Aliens, you don't really need the uh, Traveler Companion because that's where Blaps are. Um, uh, man, they got a lot of stuff in here. <laughs> Hey, they have the expanse. Speaking of, so let's see here. Yes, Traveler Second Edition Mongoose is the folder, uh, and there is the core rulebook. I will copy link address, and I will put that into. Um, into the Facebook Messenger chat. Great. There you go. <clears throat> like I said, I'm pr pretty at exit, but quite literally every single one of these that I've ever looked at on the Trev, I've, I've purchased the book, or I already have the book, but I need, you know, something to out of it um the, one of the nice things <clears throat> if you've ever ordered and i'm sure cameron you know about this if you've ever ordered books for call of cthulhu from chaosium when you order a book from them they automatically give you the pdf mongoose is the same way so if you order books off of mongoose part of your order is that you get the pdf for free so i have a, a crap ton of pdfs you mean you don't have to buy everything individually on every site you go to? Right. Who would that? I know, right? That, <laughs> that is my biggest problem with D&D Beyond, is that, right. you know, there's I know people, Jeff is one of them, his entire 5th edition library is all in D&D Beyond. What happens when D&D Beyond inevitably will go bankrupt or go tits up you know, they come out with a new edition or whatever. And, you know, historically, the digital side for Dungeons and Dragons has not been very good. <coughs> so my thing is, you know, essentially when D&D Beyond goes away, you lost your entire library. I find that problematic. I also have an issue with the price that they're, that they're asking for some of their digital products. I am not going to pay, you know almost full price that I would pay for a hardbound book to get the digital version. It's it's ridiculous. Right, for sure. <coughs> <coughs> so what um what page are we looking for? So I am on page eight. So <clears throat> now that you have characteristics, the next thing that we're going to do is get you your background skills. These are skills that you would have picked up living on whatever planet that you grew up on. Uh, they are equal to, you get a number of skills <clears throat> equal to your education uh, modifier plus three. <clears throat> And you can choose from the list of background skills on page eight. So if you're, if you're, if you have a, um, let's say that you have a six for education, that would be a plus zero. You would be able to pick three of those skills. Any three? Any three. Now, 
You'll you'll notice that all of these skills have a zero in them. It is it, a a skill at rank zero means that you have a basic certification with that skill. Now, <laughs> here's something to consider too. <clears throat> I cannot stress enough how important the vac suit skill is. What's a vac suit? So, <clears throat> vac suit is any kind of spacesuit that you're going to be wearing. Um, it is not something that you want a negative to your dice roll. If you know things go down, you don't want to be <laughs> you don't want to be out in the middle of space going, oh shit, I have a minus three modifier to my dice roll for anything in a vac suit. That's that's not a good time. So we can pick three skills and put the. Um split up the number of points however we want between them. Is that correct? No. So what's what is your what is what score did you do you have for your EDU? I have nine and so plus three is twelve. So what do I do with this twelve? No no. <clears throat> a nine no. in your EDU would give you a plus one <clears throat> for your for your, your dice modifier. So you can pick, you pick four. You can pick four skills. Oh my goodness no fire pick four skills to have a plus one in? Mm -mm. You get to pick four skills at zero. Oh, okay. So you would just you would just put those down on the sheet and the little space for where you have the um, <clears throat> for the rank would just be zero. Okay, so I'll just put a zero next to it. Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. On on page thirteen is an example of a traveler character sheet, and that's that sh is what it should look like for your skills. <coughs> so some of the options don't have an editable base next to them on the PDF that you sent out. Really? Is there a reason? Like, I was going to put, I was going to mark off that suit because, yeah, it seems like if you're going to be in space, that's important no matter who you are. Right. Uh, but I can't, I can't mark anything next to it. Interesting. Um, <clears throat> next, to, next to the back suit, is that what you're talking about? Yeah. I had the tab to it, so I clicked on one of the other skills that I hit tab, and it does let you put something next to the suit. Oh, it does? I couldn't get my, yeah, so my, like, my cursor. Okay. Okay. No. Cool. Uh, interesting. That's weird. But it works. That works for me. <coughs> if I remember correctly, there's a uh, tabulation error in this PDF as well, um, which I'm sure will come up at some point, where it, it, it wants to automatically add something that it shouldn't be adding. <coughs> Excuse me. And then with the, some of them, like, there's engineer three times. If I choose engineer as one of them, right. So it matter which one I pick. Um, it doesn't. I would pick the first one um, and just put zero next to it. And the reason why there are multiples, like you'll see um, engineer or gun combat, there's multiple spots for it, <clears throat> is that those are for specializations. Oh, got it. Cool. So I would just pick the first one, put zero, and leave the parentheses blank for now. Great. <clears throat> so the next question is, <clears throat> once you have your background skills, the next question is, what is your soch skill or soch characteristic? Another hero. <laughs> I, I did not. I did not roll well. I mean, I'm going to go with it because why not be? Half but I did not roll very well, even with dropping my lowest. Okay, so <clears throat> having a low social score is not, you know, important. Um, okay. I mean, it, 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 it can give you privileges, but, <clears throat> but um, most people in the universe don't have a high social score. Okay. And social, the social score is a little weird because it can mean different things for different characters. So 
Let's say that you're playing a Varger and you have a social score of 12, which is pretty good. That means you have a social score of 12 in the Varger Extant. In the third Imperium, you're just another dog face boy. Okay. So, <clears throat> it can mean different things. For the Aslan, a high social score can mean that, you know, um, you're higher up in their warrior hierarchy. You're probably a first son. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll get into learning stuff <laughs> about the background like Aslan and the, the first son versus the Ihati. Um, that's a whole other bag of worms. So the then the next question is, <clears throat> are you guys going to get a pre-career education? Your choices for pre-career education are university or military academy. Um. <coughs> so I'm sorry, I got this. I was still picking skills. Oh. I have a social skill of seven. Do I do something with that? Or nope, you're fine. I just I was curious. Uh, the reason why I ask is because th there is noble titles uh, for people that have a high social score. So. Okay. So yeah, um, continue picking your skills, and we will get to pre-education as soon as you're done. Oh yeah, I'm, all right, I'm I'm done now. I'll, 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 I'll go to university. Okay. What about you, Carrie? Uh, no, I. So I want. I don't know if this fits at all. My inspiration is Ching Chi, the like sixteenth-century Chinese pirate queen. Mm. Um. So she does not have a formal education. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, Cameron, um, if you are going to go to university, let's see here, to do, to do, do, you need to roll 2d6 and add your education modifier <clears throat> and you want to get a seven or higher. Okay, so uh, let's see here. We are on page 14. <clears throat> that means that you, you have successfully ent gained entry to a university. <clears throat> you get to choose one level zero skill and one level one skill from the list on page 14. While you are doing that, I will be right back. I'm going to go get something to drink. So I've guzzled down my water. your university skills. <clears throat> you have one more to put out. So if if you if you have a zero in well there's so we already asked about the multiple fields and I was totally not paying attention. Um the so no, you, I, you don't want to pick another skill. Um, you would want to pick one of the ones on page fourteen from that list under university, and I would pick, I would pick something completely new. <clears throat> All right. All right, and I'm done. Okay, and before I forget, hold on here. And then. Um, 
I'd like to go to the military academy if I can in the Navy. Okay. So you want to roll <clears throat> roll 2d6, add your endurance modifier, and okay. you want to get an 8 or better. It's on page 15. Um, it's, it says the increased BDU by 1, or is that right? Correct. So add 1 to your so EDU. I have the intellect and endurance for the Navy already. Okay. Uh, I right. Have, uh, I have a nine for endurance and an eleven for intellect. Right. What you want to do? So, if you're going into the navy, I'm sorry, not endurance. You want to, um, for the navy, roll two d six, add your intelligence okay. modifier, and you want to get a nine or better. Oh, okay, I got it. Yeah, I definitely did. I got twelve. Okay. Before I added my modifier. So you gain. Uh, let's see here. Wow, you get all service skills of the military career the academy is tied to. Okay, so, wow, that is... <clears throat> so, Carrie, if you go to page 34... Okay. Let's see here. Page 34, under skills and training uh, for Navy... <clears throat> You get all where the column that says service skills. Uh huh. You get all of those at zero. Okay. Oh wow. Cool. <clears throat> if you already have a skill, then it it does not go up. It just okay. Yeah, you would just ignore that. So, Cameron. So wait, I'm sorry. Is that what about for so? Um, uh, it's got service skills, advanced, right. education eight. Yep, it's <clears throat> it's just the service skills. Just the service skills. Okay, right. Cool. So Cameron, um, so you yeah your EDU went up by one. Now you need to roll two d six. Add your intelligence modifier, <clears throat> and you want to get a seven or better. If you get an 11 or better, you graduate with honors. <coughs> um, let's see. So I don't have the skill for seven, and then I'm adding. What was it? My intellect, or your your yeah, your intellect modifier is 11. So an uh, 11 okay. would give you a plus one. So you would add. So you would roll two d six and add plus one. Oh, so I roll. So I roll an eight. Okay. So you graduate. Uh, you get the skills that you picked. You get to increase this the level zero skill that you picked to one, and the level one skill that you picked to two. Okay. <coughs> And you get to increase your EDU by two. All right, awesome. And you will get you because you graduated, <clears throat> you get a plus one to qualify for the careers listed under graduation benefits. Uh, agent, Army, Citizen, Corporate, Entertainer, Journalist, Marines, Navy, Scholar, or Scouts. And basically what that, you'll want to put down that you get a plus one, uh, just like write a note somewhere that you get a plus one um, to qualify for those careers. <clears throat> we'll come back to that here in a moment. It also, because you graduated, allows you to make a commission role for military career. 
um, which would mean that because you have graduated, that gives you the opportunity of joining the military, the, the possibility of joining the military as an officer. <coughs> So, well, we will come back to that here in just a moment. So, Carrie, <coughs> um, you need to roll the roll one for personal development. Uh, hold on here. Okay, sorry, I'm going to keep my mouth shut. No, no. Um, so <clears throat> we're going to roll for your your graduation. The first question is, um, what is your endurance score? My endurance is uh, eight point one. Okay, so you get to add a plus one. And what's your social score? <clears throat> uh, eight. Okay, so you get to add plus two. You want to roll two d six. Add your intellect modifier and plus two to that. Then you want to get eight or higher. I got, wait, so you said 2d6 plus intellect? Well, correct. Two. And then okay. plus two on top of that. <clears throat> so, uh, let's see, that's, wait, uh, 10, 12, sorry, 12 total. Okay, so you graduate with honors. Yay! Uh, wow, the pirate queen who graduated uh, the military academy with honors. That's a, that's a frightening proposition. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. If you enter the naval career, um, you get to select any three service skills and increase them by level one if your first career is going to be navy. Okay. Um, what is personal development? Under skills and training on 34, ah. like the first college is personal development. That will that will be something that will be done when if you if you if your first four year term, your if your first career is Navy, you would roll a D six and you would get to add whatever the role comes up for personal development. Oh, got it. So, okay, so I pick, <clears throat> you said I picked three service skills and I get to increase them by one. Well, we'll come back to that. That it, it is it your intention to for your first term to go into the Navy. Yes. Okay, so we'll come back to that. You get to increase your EDU by one. Okay. <clears throat> you get to increase your SUSH by one because you graduate with honors. You're you're Miss Fancy Pants. Well, because I'm going to I'm going to take what public service has to offer and then fail and right go on my own. Right. Okay. Yep. Good choice. Um, uh, let's see here. You get automatic entry into the military career, so you don't have to roll to see if you get into the Navy. You just go in. Okay. Um, cool. And <clears throat> let's see here. And you'll want to write down a note that you get a plus two. Um, and you get to make a commission roll in your first term with the career, so you may actually enter as an officer as well. Okay. Um, oh, actually, you graduate with honors, you will automatically pass the roll and you will start your career in the Navy as an officer. <coughs> yeah, it says if graduation was with honors, traveler automatically passes the roll. I feel like I missed one thing that you told me. Because uh, did you did you say I could increase some of my service skills, or no? Did I? Oh, uh, we you will, but we'll get to that in just a minute. That's the that's the what after four years. Right, that'll be your first four year term. Right now, you are a fresh faced eighteen year old, and. Uh, <clears throat> So let's see here, events during pre-career education. <clears throat> so Cameron, roll 2d6 and 
let me uh, tell me what the number is. Seven. So you, during your time in university, have a life event. The life event table is on page 44. Roll another 2d6 and let's see what comes up. Oh, you committed, you commit or are the victim or are accused of a crime. Okay. You would lose one benefit roll or <laughs> your first term will be the prisoner career. I I lose what? what You'll lose a career? benefit roll uh, from your first term in whatever okay. career you pick. I oh. think um, I'm going to lose, uh, lose that role then I don't want to start out as a prisoner. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, spending, spending your first term in the joint. So, Carrie, roll 2d6. Okay. Four. Four. A supposedly harmless prank goes wrong and somebody gets hurt, physically or emotionally. Uh, roll 2d6, add your social modifier, and you want to get an 8 or higher. Okay, so you gain a rival. Um, we. You don't necessarily have to give your rival a name, but you could. But under allies, contacts, and enemies, you'll want to say that you have a rival and maybe give that person a name. Now on that roll, if you rolled a natural two, you would have gone directly to prison. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so with that having been done, you are now fresh faced 18 year olds ready to take on the universe in your first career. Um, I'm going to start with Carrie because she already knows she wants to go to the Navy. So, <clears throat> let's see here. So, careers start on uh, page 16, and it kind of gives an overview of <clears throat> of the careers themselves. Uh, Navy is page 44, I believe. Oh, 34, sorry. Okay, so back to 34? Yep, back to page 34. So, okay. Carrie, because you graduated with honors, um, you're automatically getting in. And... You get to pick three of the service skills and raise them to rank one. Sweet. Then the question is, um, you have to select which part of the Navy you want to be in. You can be a line, you can be on a line crewman, um, which means you're a general crewman or officer on a ship of the line. Okay. Um, you could be an engineer or gunner, uh, serving a specialist technician on a starship, or you could be in flight, which would be uh, you'd be a pilot of a shuttle. Be a pilot. Okay. So you are a pilot. Uh, you. So because you are an officer, you are a petty officer third class at the bottom of page 34 because you graduated with honors. Okay. Um, <clears throat> 
you can raise vac suit to one. <clears throat> All right, what if it already is one? Can I raise it nope. again or no? Nope, it stays at one. <clears throat> so then, <clears throat> let's see here. Skills and training. Roll a D6 for personal development. Five. So you get to raise your EDU by one. And roll another d6. Six. You gain tactics naval at zero. Okay, cool. And uh, let's see here. And roll another d6. <clears throat> You gain electronics at zero. Cool. Very cool. Actually, I'm sorry, your tactics naval would be at one. So if if you were to make just a straight tac tactics roll, it would be at zero. Uh -huh. But because it's a specialty a specialty, you get naval at one. Okay, that, sounds, that makes sense. Um, then, so let's see. You are now 22 years old. Okay. Uh, do you intend to stay in the Navy or are you going to muster out and pick another career? I'm going to stay in the Navy one more time. Okay. <clears throat> So, let's see here. Um, roll 2d6 and add your dexterity modifier, and you want to get a 7 or higher. I did not. Ooh, you get a mishap. Uh oh. Let's see here. Roll a d6. I don't want to You are injured. Let okay. me find the injury table. Oh my god, please let me get a bionic fake leg. <laughs> that would be great. Uh, a bionic fake leg. I need to find the injury table. Here it is. Uh, roll a d6 and we will find out what kind of injury you got. <clears throat> Two. Severely injured. You have to reduce one of your physical characteristics by 1d6. <gasps> ah. So either strength, endurance, or dexterity is going to be lowered by d6. Alright, it's okay, I rolled a two. Okay. I don't have to take it down too far, but I'm gonna choose strength. Okay. So that goes down to a five, which means it's minus one now? Yes, minus one now. Correct. Okay. So that was your first term. Uh Cameron, what uh career did you were you thinking of going into? Now, you graduated, um, Let's see here. Okay. So you would you would have a plus one to any of the careers with graduation on page fourteen if you wanted to go into one of those. <clears throat> um, is is position on on that? I'm not looking at it right now. Or uh, you want to go in the, be a doctor? Let's see. I want to be a, a horse surgeon. A horse surgeon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm going to use space chef. It'll be fun. Hmm. Let me look at citizen corporate. Well, so I was under scholar. They have that. So, but. Yeah. Hmm. 
Yeah, you'd probably want to be a scholar. Yeah. If I can put there, it comes. Now, hold on just a moment. There is one important rule. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> before we go any further, the important rule is that no, no, um, none, no skill can be higher than level four. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and you can only have a total number of skill levels that are your intelligence plus your education plus or times three. That's a big number. It, yeah, it is a fairly large number. I have never run into a situation where anybody was like, oh crap, I can't gain any more skills because, I mean, that's a huge number. So, so Scholar, you need to roll 2d6 and <clears throat> add your intelligence modifier and an additional one because you graduated. And you want to get a six or better? I rolled a nine, and then so plus the intelligence ten, and then one more would be eleven. Okay, so you had no problem becoming a physician. Cool. You are a doctor. Uh, so let's let me double check something here. So this is your first your first term. <clears throat> so under uh, physician, or I'm sorry, under scholar on page forty, you get all of the service skills at zero. Yeah, since you're going to be a doctor, maybe you can uh, fix Carrie's uh, strength score. Probably. <laughs> no, I'm telling you, I want like either a bionic leg, peg leg, or a hook for hands that's cybernetic. <laughs> What's your name? Captain right. Hook for Hands? I can break something up for her, I'm sure. Yeah, I want, I want some like super hook for hands. Well, she if, if Cameron's going to be a horse doctor, she might be making uh, hoof collages in her <laughs> in, in her stateroom. It's perfectly, it's perfectly legal, Morty. <laughs> <laughs> do you watch Rick and Morty, um, Carrie? I do not. Oh, God, you have to watch Rick and Morty. <laughs> <laughs> but it sounds like it's good. So I, the, the mom is like torn between staying home and with her kids and or like going and wandering with Cosmos and the science his father did. And she, she's kind of crazy though. Yeah, she's like, she's a horse surgeon and during her divorce she starts making collages. It's like a creative outlet. I don't know. But um, anyway, she's really badass. I forget in the new season did we determine that she was actually a clone or so um, <laughs> Rick Rick cloned Seth and then he had like a robot like um, 
do like that carnival thing where it shuffles. Oh, and right. Around, and he turned his back, and then when he turned back, he has no idea which bed is the clone that stayed at home with the kids and which bed is, is the real one. Right. no idea. So, like, he, he feels like crap, but everybody else is happy. So. Okay, so now you have those service skills. Um, roll a d6. I got a six. You get to pick a language or a language skill. Let's see here. <clears throat> so you would get um, a you would be able to pick a language um, at rank one. Um, <clears throat> so languages, the standard uh, language that most everybody speaks, of course, is uh, is called Galanglic or Galang, yeah, Galanglic. Um, <clears throat> that's basically a, a common trade language that everybody speaks. Um, you could pick Volani. Uh, you could pick uh, Solomani, which is the language of Old Earth. Um, you could, of course, pick Varger or Aslan or Blap. Gee, I'm having a hard time keeping up. Uh, what was the Old Earth language? Solomani. Okay, I'll write that on there. Okay. That. <clears throat> and then... What's your uh, EDU score? Well... Wow, okay. Uh, hold on one moment. Carrie, what's your EDU score? Sorry, I'm stuffing my face on mute. Give me a second. <laughs> my, uh, you, you said education? Yes. It's nine. Okay, so carry roll a d6. Three. You get, uh, engin you get engineer at zero if you don't already have it. Please. I think I do, but it's not awesome. Yeah, I have engineer at zero. Okay. Uh, so, <clears throat> Cameron, roll a d6. Three. You get electronics at zero. All right. So you'll be able to fix your laser scalpel when it goes bad. Nice. And last but not least, as a physician, roll a d6. Not three again. You get investigate at zero. So now, <clears throat> Let's see here. Cameron, roll. We so the first question is, Cameron, are you going to stay in the scholar uh, uh, profession, or are you going to quit being a scholar and try another career? I'm 22, right? So Correct. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to stay in. Okay. Roll. <clears throat> 2d6 and add your education modifier. You want to get a four or higher. So um, how do you figure out what the modifier is based off of the number? So when you look at, when you look, so scholars on page 40 and I'm at the top of the page under the survival check, it says edu four plus. So you want to roll 2d6, add your edu modifier and you want to get a four or higher. But how do you, I'm asking like, how do you know what the modifier is? Because I have 12, but that's 
in my education, that's not the modifier, is it? No, for a 12, so I put it in the roll 20 chat. 12 to 14 gives you a plus two. Okay, all right, sorry about that. No, no, sorry, you're fine. Roll 20. <clears throat> so I rolled eight and then plus two is 10 altogether. Okay, so you survive <clears throat> um, without a mishap. Roll 2d6 for an event. Three. You are called upon to perform research that goes against your conscience. If you accept, you gain the benefit of an extra benefit roll, a level in each of any two science skill specialties, and D3 enemies. <clears throat> D3 enemies? Yeah. Hmm. But I mean, you'll get an extra benefit roll and a uh, you can increase two of your science skills specialties. Then I get okay. Let's see. All right. Um. I'll I'll partake in it. Okay. So. And science skills. So that. So. Any uh, any skill that you have under physician, you can increase by one level. Okay. Cool. <coughs> <coughs> All right, and then I and need to roll something. Yeah, so roll a d6. Okay. I rolled a one. Okay, so you gain one enemy. Uh, so under contacts, allies, and enemies on your sheet, you can say that you have an enemy and you can give them a name. Um, if you want, now this, this could be quite interesting. Let me double check this here. Um, if you and Carrie, so Carrie has a rival. If you both make your, uh, if you make your enemy the same as her rival, you'll gain a connection. Um, <clears throat> sure. Uh, so that will give you <clears throat> Let's see here. So two players, you both agree that an event roll for one traveler can involve the other. Um, let's see here. You both gain an extra skill of your choice. At rank zero. Alright, done. Done. Okay. Last but not least, and I didn't do this for Carrie, so we'll do her first. <clears throat> uh, da, 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 da. Oh, never mind. No, we are on track. So, <clears throat> so Cameron, this this event that that happened to you is important because. <clears throat> so when you muster out, you get a number of rolls on the muster out mustering out benefits equal to how many terms that you spend in the career. So right now, if you were to quit being a scholar, you would only get one roll for mustering out. However. Because of this event, you now have two roles on the mustering out benefits. Uh, but since you're staying in, this, in the career, we don't have to worry about that just yet. So you are both <clears throat> now 22 years old. Carrie, you are now 26. It happens so fast. It does. Well, it's, it's a lot like real life because 26 happens quick. Um, Carry, roll a d6. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Four. You can raise your intellect by one. Nice. Roll another d6. Wait, I'm going to check to see if that ups my modifier because it does. Okay, and then you can roll another d6. Uh huh. 
Six. You <clears throat> can add admin, or admin at rank zero. <clears throat> okay. I think it's funny that, that there's a, an entire skill on how to fill out forms. <laughs> uh, Carrie. Well, maybe, maybe for me the skill is forgery. Possibly, yes. Um, because that's filling out forms, but maybe. Right. Uh, Carrie, you are an officer. Roll another d6. <clears throat> Four. Ooh. You get melee uh -oh. blade at rank one. Ooh. That's so See, now I want a cybernetic arm that a blade shoots out of. I mean, it's, instead of a hook, you just got a cutlass on the end of your your arm. Exactly. <laughs> or it looks like a hook and turns into a cutlass. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm gonna try to use that hook and turn it into a cutlass. Very carefully. One leg at a time. <laughs> <laughs> and Carrie, roll another d6. <clears throat> You gain the flyer skill at rank zero. <clears throat> okay. What's the difference between flyer and pilot? The difference between flyer and pilot would pilot would be assuming that you are piloting a ship, uh, a spaceship, whereas flyer would be like a grav vehicle, um, airplanes, things like that. Okay. Cool. Pretty important skill to have if you want to pilot, like, say, um, a uh, an air car or something like that, because an air raft require, would require uh, flyer skill. <clears throat> so that's a good skill to have. Okay. Um, and then roll 2d6 and add your education modifier, and you want to get a five or better. I got three. Okay, all that means is that you do not go up in rank this term. You are still okay. a petty officer third class. Okay. And now we are going, for your second term, going to make another survival check. So roll 2d6, add your dexterity modifier, and you want to get a seven or better. <clears throat> I got a four. Why do I keep these? <laughs> Dun dun dun! Roll one d six, and we will see what mishap happens. Two. Don't feel bad. I had like a, a thirty eight year old traveler character that they. I don't think they ever made a survival check. <laughs> Not once. <laughs> You're more machine than man. Uh, what you? What did you roll for your one d six? Two. Oh shit. <laughs> you are placed in the frozen watch, cryogenically stored on board a ship, and revived improperly. Reduce your strength, dexterity, or endurance by one due to muscle wastage. Okay. Um, I don't want to go any lower on my strength. So I think I'm gonna take down my deck one. Okay. The good news is you are not ejected from the career. Okay. Actually, I'm gonna take my endurance down one. Um, okay. I'm not ejected from the career. Okay. So the big question is, are you going to stay in the Navy or are you going to leave and muster out? So I think since I did not get the promotion, uh, this is where I get butt hurt and leave the Navy. Okay. So you have, uh, you get two mustering out benefits. Roll a D6. Okay. Or I'm sorry, not a D. Uh, da -ba -da -ba -da. Hold on. Let me. So, Cameron, my thought is that. I, my rival is going to be my superior officer who like harassed me 
and that's why I didn't get the promotion. Mm-hmm. So then, I don't know if maybe if he's your enemy, maybe he's got a history of unwanted ass grabbing. <laughs> in the in the show, Beth um, allies herself with the rebels against like the big military. Um, oh, perfect. Yeah, so it's like it would make sense. Right on. So you actually get three rolls <clears throat> uh, because you are a officer. So roll 2d6, or I'm sorry, roll 1d6. And the first question is, do you want to take a benefit or do you want cash? I think I want to take a benefit. Okay. Uh, so just for our information here, you may only roll on cash tables a maximum of three times. For any for your entire your any career, so um, okay. so you're going go ahead and roll one d six, and we will see which benefit you get. Uh, six. You have your choice of leaving the navy with a ship's boat, which is a small craft, or you can get two ship shares. In my opinion, the better of the two would be taking the two ship shares. Okay, sounds good. I'll do that. Okay. Uh, your second roll, do you want cash or benefit? Um, I think just uh, cash. I don't know. Um, I think I want all benefit. Okay. So, two ship shares. so you get two ship shares. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll so another. Go ahead and roll another d6. Two. Your intelligence goes up by one. Great. Okay. And for your last roll, go ahead and roll another d6. Really, this is my endurance. Four. You get a weapon of your choice. Uh, give me just a moment. Uh, I will be right back. Okay. I'm going to grab something.
apologies that that took so long. Um, so, Carrie, you get a weapon of your choice. Dump the dome. So you're probably, <clears throat> I, I, it doesn't say, but um, <clears throat> I am going to put some limit on it because you're not going to muster out with something like a plasma gunman portable. Um, okay. So on page 91, there's the beginning of equipment. And more specifically, okay. let me find weaponry. So weaponry actually starts on page 116. So your weapons okay. uh, could be, you know, a blade of some kind, <clears throat> a cutlass, or, you know, probably not a broadsword, but you could go with a blade or a cutlass or a dagger, uh, that kind of thing. It could be okay. a slug thrower, um, <clears throat> either rifle or pistol, up to you. Um, okay. Or it could be an energy weapon. Choice is uh, yours. What do you recommend? Hmm. Um, probably I would forego the idea of a blade because, an, or any kind of uh, melee weapon. And the reason for that being is that a ship's locker um, and pretty much any airlock is usually going to have cutlasses sitting there. And the reason for that is that. On board a spaceship, <clears throat> you don't want to be firing a gun too many times because, you know, space. Um, so that usually wouldn't become an issue. Um, <clears throat> so then it breaks down to either a slug thrower or an energy weapon. Um, either is a good choice. Um, laser pistols are pretty good. Um, let's see here. Yeah, laser pistol does 3d6 damage. <clears throat> uh, <coughs> a TL11 laser pistol does 3d plus 3. I would like a pistol. I, I don't know what kind, but... There's a standard auto pistol. Um, they do 3d6 minus 3. Uh, Here's a personal favorite of mine, the Gauss pistol. It is okay. basically, uh, it doesn't, Gauss pistols don't use, um, uh, they don't use an explosive charge for the rounds. They're an electromagnetic rail. They do 3d6 damage. Let's see here. Yeah, I think I like the idea of it firing differently, the gas pistol. Okay. Ah, that sounds cool. Okay, so on your character sheet, you can write down the fine. For weapons? Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, under your weapons, put down Gauss pistol. <clears throat> For TL, the tech level is 13. Okay. Range is 20 meters. Okay. Damage is 3D. Okay. Uh, kilograms is one. Okay. Uh, it doesn't have a cost, so. Uh, magazine is 40. Man, that's a that's a good high high vol or a high capacity high pistol. Rip. Yeah. Uh, for traits, <clears throat> it has AP3, so it it will ignore three points of armor. Okay. And it has auto two. So this isn't just a pistol. It is a machine pistol. You can pull the trigger and really... It just keeps firing. Right. Okay. 
now, so you are a 26 year old that is mustered out of the Navy. Cameron, first thing we need to do for you is roll uh, 2d6 and add your education modifier to it. You want to get an 8 or higher. <clears throat> Let's do this, 14. Okay, you go up in rank, or <laughs> if there is such a thing, and you get medic at rank one. What if I already have it at um, a higher rank? Then you would just ignore it. Oh, okay. So what is your medic score? It's the only one that I have to. Wow, okay. Yeah, and pour in a whole bunch into that. <clears throat> so at rank two, you are a, a pretty capable doctor. Um, <clears throat> at rank three, people would travel across the planet just to get to you because you're such a well-known doctor. And at rank four, you might be known an entire in an entire subsector where people would travel to that planet just to see you. I see. Okay. Or you might get a TV show like Dr. Oz. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, next, roll a 1d6 for personal development. A six. You gain another language. Okay, you um, take one for me. Uh, how about Volani? Okay. That's a good one. Alrighty, let's go to now. Okay. Um, and that would be at rank one. Uh, roll a 1d6 for advanced education. One. You gain art at rank zero. All right. And roll one d six for physician. Four. You can add another rank to medic. Oh, geez. Okay. And the question then becomes, are you going to stay in your career or are you going to muster out and choose something else or begin life as a as a 26 year old traveler? I think I, I think I'm too young to be a traveler yet. Okay. Uh, maybe I should I think maybe I should go into science for a little bit. Do you, I have still in, in scholars, so does that, do you still muster out? To, no, no, you, it would still be in scholar, you're just changing your, your, uh, your profession within the same field. Okay, um, yeah, I think I would go into science. Okay. As a science for a little while. So, then, in that case, you need to roll <clears throat> roll 2d6, add your education modifier, uh, and you want to get a 4 plus. I rolled 11. Okay. Plus 2 is 13. Yeah. Okay. And roll 2d6 for an event. Uh, five. Ooh, you win a prestigious prize for your work, garnering both the praise and envy of your peers. Uh, you get a plus one to any benefit roll when you finally muster out. Okay. Let me that. Yeah, you'll want to put down plus one benefit roll. Man, everything's coming up roses for Cameron. I'm rolling awesome, so next time it'll probably be garbage. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Carrie, 
Yeah. What career do you want to go into? Or do you want to well, start life uh, at 26 as a traveler? No, I think I'd like to pick up the pirating skills before I started the traveler, so I would like to go rogue. Okay. Ah, rogue. And I do need the deck from Quest Pirates. Okay. Because I have the deck for Quest Pirates. Okay. So, so you already rolled and got uh, over a six? Well, I mean, my, my, I'm starting off with uh, okay, so roll 2d6 and add your dexterity modifier. Okay. Okay. Eight. okay. Then the question is, do you want to be a thief, enforcer, or a pirate? I want to be a pirate. No, of course. Yar. Um, okay, so... <clears throat> First, roll a 1d6 for personal development. Okay. Three. You can raise your endurance by one. Okay. I don't think that puts me at zero yet, but I'm getting closer. Oh, it does! Yay! <laughs> so, you only gain all of the service skills with the first career that you join. So roll a d6 okay. and we'll see which of the service skills you, you gain here. Okay. Four. You get gun combat at zero. Oh, I think I already have that. Yeah, I already have gun combat at one. Oh, okay. Uh, what's your education score? Nine. Okay, so we don't roll on that table. And then roll a d6 for pirate. Three. You gain gunner at zero. Oh, I think I have that too. <laughs> yeah, I already have gunner at zero. Okay. And then... So you are now a 30-year-old pirate. <clears throat> Uh, and before we talk about that, um, the first thing that is important is we talk about age because that is important because um, after, let's see, the effects of age start to take effect at 34 years of age um, where you would you start to um, reduce characteristics. Now, there are um, there are drugs called antigathics that will prevent aging. They are illegal and they are monstrously expensive. Okay. Um, if you want to see if you can get antigathics, you can roll. <clears throat> Let's see, concerning my rolling. You want to roll 2d6, add your social modifier, and you need to get a 10 or higher to even find the drugs. Right. Mine is well tracked. Ooh, uh, 12. Okay. So you could find antigathics if you wanted to. There are two drawbacks. Um, first, the combined risk of trying to obtain a reliable supply, which you've already done, and the disruption to your biochemistry means that you must make two survival checks each term if you want to start taking the drugs. The second is that the drugs cost 1D times 200,000 credits for each term that you're using the drugs. Okay. So they are monstrously expensive. Um, yeah. But you don't need to start taking them right now if you don't want to. Yeah, I think that, can I make a note somewhere that I know I have a connection, but not yes. to it yet? Yes. So I'm going to put that in my enemy's allies contact rivals. Okay. So that I know someone. Okay. What were they called? Anagathics. Uh, and I will type it up 
in the the chat That is how you spell that. Cool. All right, so let me go back to Rogue. Then the question is, are you going to stay in the Rogue career for another term, which would make you, which would put you at 34 at the end of your next term, or are you going to muster out? Well, if I want to be a pirate queen, I feel like I need to have one more round of pirate and then muster out. Okay, so go ahead and roll 2d6, add your dex modifier, and you want to get a 6 or better. Okay. Oh, finally. Uh, 9. Alright, so no mishap. Roll 2d6 for an event. 7. You get a life event. Because life events happen even for pirates. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, life event. Roll 2d6. Okay. Five. Improved relationship. A romantic relationship involving you deepens, possibly leading to marriage or some other emotional commitment. You gain an ally. Okay. So you could put down that you have an ally, you can give that person a name, um, and it looks like it's up to you um, if you want to marry this person or be engaged to them. Okay. However you want to do that. Um, <laughs> if you want to be married to Cameron, you would get another skill. <laughs> if you, both of you agree to that. <laughs> Um, I actually am going to pretend that uh, Malcolm Reynolds is real and that I'm married to him. Okay. You can do that. To him, but that we are, we are ships that pass in the night regularly. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll 2d6 and add your intelligence modifier and you want to get a 6 or better. Eleven. You went up in rank <clears throat> from lackey to henchman. You gain your choice either pilot one or gunner one. I'm gonna do gunner one because I'm already pilot one. Okay. See, so look at that. Okay. You're already moving up the priority ranks. That's why I'm a queen. <laughs> <clears throat> So, <clears throat> Cameron, roll 1d6 for personal development. One. Your intellect goes up by one. And roll 1d6 for advanced education. Uh, electronics goes up by one. And then roll 1d6 for scientist. You get engineer at zero. 